And here now to continue the conversation is political strategist Rena Shaw. Uh, Rena, thank you so much for hopping on the call today. Hi, good to see you. Great to see you too. Uh, so big picture, Nikki Haley has some big money behind her, as Kelly outlined, but the odds are stacked against her. Is it possible, do you think, that she can change the momentum significantly enough to pull out a victory here? Well, certainly the narrative has been set in many places that the race is not pursuable for her and therefore she should drop out. Now, when you're talking about a pursuit of something like 1,200 some delegates, which is what is needed to outright win the Republican nomination, it does get a bit dicey, but it doesn't get dicey until Super Tuesday. And that to me is where you can feel the real pulse of this Republican electorate. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. That is the day in which you will see how Nikki Haley really stacks up to her competition, Donald Trump. In those uh, races, which are coast to coast in many states, as we know, at the top of March, we will be able to see which races do the winner takes all bit. And after that is my assessment that it is mathematically impossible for Nikki Haley to win the nomination. Now, of course, the chorus is loud, um, many growing and adding themselves to that chorus from here in D.C., saying that she should not suffer an embarrassment in South Carolina, so she should drop out before. Others saying maybe she will, you know, make it through and, and fare all right, and therefore she should drop out after, depending on how she does there. I think any which way you turn it, the race is still very much gettable for her, and that is where we sit today, despite uh, anything that happens in Nevada. So the argument from some Republicans, as you know, is Nikki Haley should drop out of the race and stop damaging the front runner, former President Donald Trump. Uh, strategically, it appears she's staying in this race in the event something goes sideways with this campaign, though. Uh, do you think that's the case? Or do you think, in light of this recent funding, she believes she does have a shot at the White House going head to head with the former president? We've seen a few different versions of Nikki Haley, but the one version that she always seems to bring to the table is that she is capable, if given the chance, she is capable of talking about kitchen table issues in a way that feels very responsible. So her handling also of geopolitical tension across the globe uh, is another place in which she has made the case she is also the best equipped, especially in light of everything we're seeing the Biden and Blinken duo sort of fudge these days, whether you're talking about Israel, Gaza, or you're looking at Ukraine. Ukraine and Russia, um, or even the Houthis in Yemen. One thing is for sure, Nikki Haley always talks about her experience, whether it's as a state executive or, again, as an ambassador uh, to the UN under Trump. Uh, I think one uh, one element that doesn't get talked about enough, though, is that she could be considering all the things in staying in the race. She could be looking at the fact that Trump is uh, in a very, uh, you know, a historic moment. We've just never seen anybody run for the White House under such circumstances, particularly given uh, today's decision by the federal court saying that uh, he does not get presidential immunity. And so everything uh, can be complicated at any time, given the political winds, the shift could happen. But Nikki Haley, I I do believe feels in her heart of hearts that she brings the best Republican armor to this candidacy and therefore could handily defeat a Democrat in the fall. That is the case she's got to make for the next many months. It's a long primary. Let's not forget June is when it all ends and we're still sitting at the top of February. <laughs> yes, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, but for the Republican side in general, Rena, do you think that by staying in the race, she's doing more harm than good to the Republican ticket as we do head into the general? What are your thoughts? on that. I don't believe she's doing any more harm than the former president is bringing upon himself. Look, he is using all the, the levers he can and pulling them uh, quite adeptly all at once through his legal teams. And he's doing that to save himself. I mean, who wouldn't want to save themselves when they're facing 90 some counts of criminal indictment across four jurisdictions, three states and the District of Columbia. So again, uh, this is all sort of matters in which the former president has put himself in hot water. It doesn't take Nikki Haley out there on the stump every day making the case. And, and I would also submit to you, there is some saliency to her point where she says she wouldn't even be in this race if Donald Trump hadn't failed us, whether it was in driving up the national deficit to the tune of millions, trillions of dollars, excuse me, or to, frankly, just being a very chaotic nuisance. So uh, I do think, again, she, as a former governor of South Carolina, makes a great case for herself. But it's really, really, at the end of the day, up to the people who turn out.
And how do you think she addresses some of the concerns surrounding where some of this big money is coming from? Um, there have been allegations that she's bought and paid for. How do you think she tackles those conversations head on, Rena? Well, I'm not advising her, but if I were, I would say keep on with this narrative that you are somebody who has got this money and funding that's come to you based on the, the case of merit. She has shown people that she deserves this money. It was her debate performances that drew this attention, that turned heads, got people who were even center-left saying, hey, she's not so bad. So this sense that you know she is a reasonable who, Republican who can win in this era where Roe has been overturned as a woman with an R next to her name. And again, talk about uh, humanizing this issue of abortion, which is gonna very much be on the ballot at the end of the year. Um, instead of demonizing women, that is a responsible thing. And so she deflects sometimes from talking about this big corporate money, which we know a lot of the Republican base that supports Trump loves to rail against, saying that, you know, we don't want that. We don't want that bought and paid for a politician from, you know, really the mid-Atlantic power centers. But that is where she's deriving her support. That is what is keeping her in this race entirely, because if the money had dried out like it did for Ron DeSantis, she wouldn't still be in it. Right. Important perspective. Rena Shaw, thank you as always. Um, thank you so much for having me.